I want to turn to the major news, uh, I should say the money story of the day, and that is Lyft. That stock uh, going public today, the company I should say is going public today for the first time. David Barnson's with us, the Barnson Group Chief Investment Officer. David, I, I'm not going to suggest that you would buy the stock today. It's not your kind of company, not your kind of stock. But what about later in the year when things settle down? Would you consider an investment in Lyft? Well, again, our focus on companies that we buy is always on companies that are growing their free cash flow. And I would love to see Lyft grow their free cash flow. Right now, their free cash flow is negative $1 billion. So they have a very good chance of growing from where they're starting. But I doubt that will happen this year, Stuart. I think it, it, this company will have to evolve over the years. And, and to get to the point where we consider it investable, I think they have a way to go. But that doesn't mean they can't succeed. You know, it, it, they have a tough road ahead. Uh, it's not something we'd be buying now and participating in the kind of first day mayhem. How do you explain this excitement? And there is genuine excitement for this company. I mean, it, 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 we've been open now for, what, 37 minutes. We haven't seen the first trade yet. They're trying to figure out at what price to do it. How do you explain the excitement? Um, I think that we have a 25-year-old, you know, story of IPOs going back to the dot-com era being really fun. They're just intrinsically exciting. And back in the late 90s, when a lot of those names were popping up, it was a point in my career where it was a lot of fun, and I, and I certainly understand it. That story has changed dramatically. It just isn't true anymore. And, and I kind of learned in my time, I spent a lot of years at Morgan Stanley before I started my own firm. And the rule of thumb was, if you got a big allocation of an IPO, you didn't want it. And if you wanted it, you didn't get a big allocation. <laughs> and so I re recall like it was yesterday with the Facebook IPO and them uh, people calling all night long, giving you more shares and more shares because it was there was such an abundance of availability. And we know what happened to that IPO out of the gate. Now, what happened to that company later? They executed and it became a very profitable investment for people who were actual long-term investors. Yeah. But the excitement you're referring to is about people who want an initial pop. We call it free money. And we don't believe such a unicorn exists. It's not what we're here to do. Um, last one. Uh, I think there is going to be a pop. Right from the right from the get go this morning. I don't know how high it's going to go, but I think it's going to be a pop. We shall see, obviously, and then it'll settle down. And then, I, I, but I, I don't think it'll settle down for some time. What do you say? Well, I, I think it's entirely possible it does pop that way. It's going to come out at about a twenty billion dollar market capitalization, and that's on a company that loses a billion dollars a year in cash flow. So what it does first day is inherently unpredictable because it's obviously not going to be connected to any real valuation metric or any fundamental. But I would just caution people about Snap and Twitter um, because those are a couple companies that also popped and popped meaningfully first day. And they didn't just subsequently drop. They completely tanked. And so I think those are the types of things that uh, people that are being really speculative have to be careful about. Ultimately, if this is a long-term company with long-term prospects, they're going to execute. But as far as first-day stuff goes, it doesn't really mean anything for the actual prospects of the company in the okay. months ahead. David, thank you very much for being with us this Friday morning. Always appreciate it. Thanks very much.